Well, imagine that you have severe back problems and you visit the government system and they tell you that it's going to pay, take about two years before they can fix it. That's what our guest today was facing. And so we ended up going to Germany. And today, John Massing is going to tell us a little bit about his experience. John, thanks for joining me here today. You're welcome. So why don't we start from the top? How did your back problems begin? I have lived on an acreage west of Calgary for about 20 years. And uh, I was lifting wet sod in the pickup truck many years ago, probably 12 or 13 years ago. And I did feel the back kind of pop. And I think that's when I actually blew a disc. And um, it just got progressively worse over the years. And so how did that, how did it affect you before surgery? What was it like? How did it affect you on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, I had, I had quite bad lower back pain. And uh, like everybody else, I probably thought I could cure it myself or over time that it would get better, but it never did. Um, I actually went, uh, I work in the United States a lot. I've had an office in Las Vegas for many years. So I did go to a, a pain clinic in Las Vegas and had, had uh, some kind of shots there for the lower back. Um, cortisone, I expect, was part of it. And that really didn't do much either. Um, the reduction in pain didn't last very long. And then I also went to uh, a clinic in Los Angeles. Uh, that was probably five years ago um, and got Regenokine therapy um, at uh, a clinic called HealthSpan. I believe it was called HealthSpan Medicine and, uh, on Wilshire Boulevard. And I must say that did help uh, a bit. They, they take your blood. Um, on Monday morning, several vials of blood, and then they put it in an incubator overnight. And, um, and I, I guess they put it in one of those machines that separates the, the white blood cells from the rest, so uh, from your red blood cells. And then uh, Tuesday through Friday morning, I got what in essence was my rejuvenating plasma injected back into the disc area and in the back. And I must say that did reduce the pain uh, by about 50%. But as they told me then, it would only last two to four years. And so after about three years, I was back in severe lower back pain. And at the same time, I had some shoulder issues. So I asked the physiotherapist at LifeMark Physiotherapy in uh, Springboro in West Calgary um, what I could do about my back. And I had sent x-rays and an MRI to uh, an orthopedic surgeon, sur an orthopedic clinic in Northwest Calgary, and they had emailed me back. They couldn't get back to me. Then. Well, I wouldn't get any surgery within 24 months. So wow. um, I asked the physiotherapist there what I could do about it, and they said they had sent, or they had recommended a place called the Anande uh, Clinic in Germany to several patients they have or had, and uh, so I started looking into it. I Googled a non-day clinic, and, um, and then I talked to a lady named Sue Hart, who's kind of a liaison person for them in North America. I believe she lives in Michigan, and she was very helpful. And uh, so then I did send my x-rays and my um, MRI to a non-day, mm -hmm. and um, they got back to me, I, I did courier it over, so they got back to me in about three days. Mm -hmm. And basically said, we, we think we can help you, and asked me when I wanted to come over. So two, two years, I mean, that is a huge amount of time to be living with, with pain. Um, I just want to ask you briefly, what, how did that situation, the pain affect you on a day-to-day -day basis in terms of things you like to do, like sports, you know, maybe chores around the house, whatever. Well, it, it was affecting me. Uh, it was affecting me a lot. Uh, I love to ski, and I wasn't enjoying skiing anymore. I golf. I belong to a nice golf club, and I wasn't enjoying golf anymore. Um, I also fly a lot for my business, and of course, it was 
So there's a lot of pain when you sit for three or four hours in an airplane and try and mm -hmm. get up and move. Um, so it was affecting me a lot. And when they told you that it was going to take you or going to take two years to provide the the uh, procedure that would have helped you with your back, how did you feel as a taxpayer? I mean, in Canada, we pay a lot in taxes and everyone says, well, yeah, yeah, but it's, it's okay. It's because we get this, this great healthcare system. Did you feel like the system was serving you? Well, you know the answer to that. Of course, it's not serving me. Yeah. It doesn't serve a lot of people. Yeah. We're all paying, we're all paying huge taxes in Canada for a lot of things we don't get. Mm -hmm. And what about the German experience? What happened once you got over there? Could you tell us just a little bit about um, the experience? Well, uh, first of all, I had talked to a number of people who had already been there. Um, um, Life Market gave me a couple of names and, and I talked to the people who had already been there. And then I had several conversations with Sue Hart, who is the liaison for a non day directly. Mm -hmm. And uh, she basically answered a lot of questions and set up the trip itself. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife and I went to, uh, flew from Calgary to Amsterdam. Uh, that was during spring break uh, in 2018. Uh, so we flew to Amsterdam, spent a I think it was three or four days there, just kind of enjoying the city and, and flew over to Bremen, Germany. Um, and and on they had uh, people pick us up there and took us to a small village north of Bremen called Stenham. It's a village of about 400 people, a beautiful little place. And uh, that's where the clinic actually, or one of the clinics is. Uh, for Stenham uh, or, or for uh, Anande. And uh, there's a nice little hotel there across from the hospital. Uh, as I found out after I got there, the orthopedic surgeons uh, headed by Dr. Ritter Lang, I, it looks to me like they bought this small uh, 62 bed hospital or 60 bed hospital in Stenham. And it was totally renovated, lovely, immaculate. And uh, so you go there on, I think it, I got there on a Tuesday. It might have been a Monday night or a Tuesday. And I met Dr. Ritter Lang on Wednesday morning. Mm -hmm. And uh, along with, I, I think it was four other, well, I know it was four other people who he was operating on as well. Mm -hmm. So he met all of us one-on-one, -on -one, told me what he was going to do. And then Thursday morning, I had surgery first thing. and. Um, stayed in the hospital about five or six days and they get you up walking immediately and there's all these night nice pathways through the village and so on. Mm -hmm. And then about five or six days later, I went, they had us, had all four of us go to a nice hotel back in Bremen, which is only about 20 minutes away. Mm -hmm. And uh, that hotel, I believe it was called Park House, had a huge park around it and on one side and a lake on the other. Mm -hmm. And of course they're encouraging you to walk and get out and move. And um, the physiotherapist came to, uh, came to all of us every day there. We each had a time slot. And the massage therapist came, I believe it was every second day, it might've been every day mm -hmm. to this hotel. And I stayed there about, and my wife and I stayed there about I'll say eight or nine days. Mm -hmm. And then um, bottom line is somebody picks you up again and takes you to the airport and you're gone. Wow. And, so um, it was very efficient. It was very well done. Yeah. Um, Dr. Ritterlang's staff after the operation were very helpful. And yeah, bottom line is it was concierge service. I did keep in touch with the other four people that were operating on that day. You kind of get to know everybody because you're in the hotel at the same time. And um, they all had successful surgeries as well. We kept in touch for about a year and it turned out well for everyone. Now the key, I think also Colin, I will say this, um, the physiotherapist in Germany gave me some very good exercises to do. And then uh, back here, at, at, uh, I took a lot of physio for about a month or so, I'd say, maybe six weeks at LifeMart. 
and they also gave me additional exercises. And uh, I still, to this day, do those exercises every morning. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, I, I ride bike at a nice rec center in Calgary called West Side. Oh. And I ride bike and do weights every morning, and I swim every second morning, and a lot of swimming. And how is your back? How is your back now? It's very good. I mean, I get a little bit of discomfort, but minimal. Mm -hmm. um, and I, like I said, I'm doing those exercises and swimming every second day. I think it's been very, very helpful. So, bottom line is, it all turned out very good for me. And when we had spoken before. Uh, on the phone, you had mentioned that there were some other Canadians at that facility. Right. One of the uh, challenges with the examining medical tourism in, in Canada is that there's a lack of government data. The, the data is not great. And so there's not a lot of information on why Canadians are going abroad. I mean, some of the common reasons, of course, is that the long waiting lists in Canada, sometimes there are procedures that aren't offered in Canada. That's why people go abroad or they feel the quality is better, whatever. When you spoke with the other people, was there, did they tell you why they decided to go to Germany for the, the procedure? Well, the three other people that I was off, that were operated on the same day I was, were all from the United States. Hmm. Um, and I believe they, we all found out about Ananda in different ways, but they just got rave reviews about Ananda as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, the costs, of course, in the United States were higher for surgery, um, even if you had, I think, a good health plan. Um, yeah, yeah. So the four that I was operated on, or the other three that I was operated on with, uh, were off the United States. However, um, I do know that there's people from all over the world there, but about 90% of the the people going there are from Canada and the United States. Huh. And when I went back for the first checkup, like a week after back to the hospital from the hotel, we met three other people that were from Canada, one from Saskatchewan, one a farmer from Manitoba, and a young girl from my area, west of Calgary, as a matter of fact. Really? And the, the young girl from Springbank already had surgery that wasn't successful. And the same with the farmer from Manitoba. He had had unsuccessful surgery. And he was actually getting operated on twice when I was there. Mm. He was getting on, operated on one week and then a week later. Mm. So it was much more complicated, it sounded like, than mine. Mm. But yes, uh, I, I met three other people from Canada there, just in my day. When you say they had unsuccessful surgery, in, in those cases, was it unsuccessful in Canada? And that's what yeah. led to go back? Yeah. Okay. okay, that's interesting. And just but one final question, John, um, you know, this is uh, something that's a big step for someone. And quite often they, you know, they're wondering, well, how do you go about uh, going abroad for healthcare? What do you have to keep in mind? What, what recommendations would you have for someone who's thinking about potentially going abroad? I would just check out the facility and obviously the surgeons do extensive research. And I probably talked to maybe three or four people who had already been there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I talked to them. And of course, a couple of them were from Calgary, where I live. Uh, so I'd really just, I just do your due diligence. Now, the other thing I'll mention, um, I was concerned about, um, about infection because I've had two friends who got severe infection. Mm -hmm. From one from a hip surgery and one from knee surgery. And uh, for whatever it's worth, I asked Sue Hart, the liaison for, for uh, Ananda, she had had surgery as well. That's why she was actually worked with them now. I think she had surgery like 10 or 12 years ago. She was an equestrian rider. And I asked her how many complications she had seen in her years, and she said zero. Hmm. And I asked her how many infections she had seen, and she said zero. Oh, wow. I asked the Ananda people when I got there the same questions. So for whatever it's worth, uh, they had me take a, a, a swab in my nose for infection a year, uh, week before I left. And I had to send those results to them. And then I had another one when I got there. Hmm. And um, so I, from what I know, they don't have 
infection problems there. Yeah. Oh, it sounds like they're they're doing their due diligence to try to make sure that uh, infections don't spring up. And we've That's certainly right. heard about that when we've talked to other patients um, okay. who have gone places for different procedures. Is that 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 can occur in Canada and other places? So. Yeah, that's interesting. Well, listen, I would just want to say thank you very much for sharing your experience and, and telling us a bit about uh, uh, what you went through with your back issues and your, your experience in Germany. You're welcome. I hope it, I hope it helps some other Canadians. I'm, I'm sure it will. Thanks again, John. All right. Have a good day.